Hello all, Sandy Q and I again, push that back a little bit. There you go, professional um, video as always. Uh, right, we start off today. Um, I started work last Sunday. Um, I was doing the final thing for the child. That's all over now. That's um, all, all sorted. Uh, but strangely enough, I got recognised. Now this happens sometimes. Uh, sometimes, you know, you expect to be recognised on a Monday in a distribution centre or on a Wednesday or a Saturday morning even at a petrol station. These kind of things happen. Not on Sunday morning on a tiny alleyway down Soho Square. <laughs> like, there's no one else there. And this guy comes to the back of the truck and he goes, I know you. You're that YouTube bloke. And it's Paul Bevan. Who, I mean, a few of you do follow some comments and all that kind of stuff. May, um... Recognize. Nice guy. Gave us a hand unloading, Paul. Thanks very much. But I want to draw attention to him because he's got... I mean, I don't do the Instagram thing. I'm just a YouTube guy. I probably should do all the others, but I don't know how it works. But he's on Instagram, and he does um, photos of, like, music people and stuff like that. And I had a look at his Instagram on Moles, and it's... um. Really good, really. I mean, and he's, he's like, and he was showing me some of the photos. He goes, That bloke there, uh, that's the guy at a radio head, not Tom York, the other one. I'm like, That's these are big time Charlie. So, if any of you guys are out on Instagram, his site is Paul underscore Bevan B E V A N music photos. Have a look at them, they're really good. I may even have to ask him if he wants to sell me a couple because they're I, I love them, I think they're great. Anyway, enough about uh, Paul. Disney shop. I missed the joke up, as my mate Lawrence Atero said, your delivery is awful. Yeah, I know, I was going to record it, I couldn't be bothered. Um, but yeah, I was at Disney, and I did mention about the driver shortage. Now, it wasn't really, it was kind of a flippant comment, and it's more to do with a lot of us, I think, are spending too much time at distribution centres. And if there's well, some way that you could take the distribution centres to task, go like, okay, for every driver that spends more than an hour at a distribution centre, when they, if they, they turn out when they're supposed to be, we're going to charge you a, a fine. They would employ more people. If they employed more people, we would get processed a lot quicker. If we got processed a lot quicker, as drivers, we'd be much happier because we'd be driving and we would also be available to do, you might get that extra job in a day, which would really help the transport problem. But anyway, a domain name guy says, so there isn't a driver shortage. There are plenty of good experienced drivers being paid by universal credit because they can't pass the DBS check and have been excluded from society by using uh, by using stupid codes to monitor people. He also, domain guy, you said something else about codes, uh, YouTube codes, which is something I'm missing out on. Give us, give us a, you know, an update would be great on that one. Uh, it's certainly true that there are drivers out there. I mean, we've had the discussion before. There's a guy who said, I'm a class one. But I'm stacking the shelves in Aldi's because of the money that they pay me in comparison to what I was getting in class one, I'm better off. No aggravation, nine to five, walk home, you know, sort of, you know, I'm at home to bed every night, see my family, eat my own dinner, like, you know. So, uh, B. Carroll says, it's not enough to solve the shortage. No, you're right, mate. You're not, you are right. Um... Tried booking container delivery recently. All the local firms told me they take jobs three weeks from now. It's getting a bit heavy. It is. I mean, I've got to find drivers in Coventry soon, I hope. Still waiting on the operators. They take forever, that firm. Um, but, you know, I've not, well, I'm starting to creep my prices up a little bit. I don't always get it, but sometimes I do. And I kind of, a few people have gone, yeah, fair enough. We understand, we know what it's like out there. So, uh, Jay Mills says, an old driver who quit when the HGV hit a massive £6.30 per hour. He said, I've been in factories um, ever since for more money. He said, I'm ready to come back as wages hit £20 per hour, per hour but it's, is it worth a £320 gamble? I still remember years ago, employers sport for choice getting pushed back for younger lads. So, employers, if you need staff, pay up. I would imagine, uh, Jay Mills, it will depend on how much they're going to offer you i would say it depends on two things how much they're going to offer you and what they want you to do i mean we don't pay the most but we don't pay the least but we are two jobs and knock so it's no grief do your first one if you finish early you go home early you still get paid and that's why i'm thinking i've got half a chance to get new drivers and also read the small print a lot of them are saying oh we give you this we give you that and you go well, hang on a second yeah you're doing all this up front but you're taking all this away from what used to be there so really all you've done is restructure the contract to make it look better than it is before well that ain't cut you know that butter's no parsnips does it so there we go. Uh, on tail or no tail, the argument of whether you should have a tail lift on a Luton or not. 
um, a Luton, is it better to have a Luton, box Luton with a tail or curtain with no tail? And I did say that, you know, it's 6-1 half dozen the other. Uh, Lee Westcott said, it's worth having a Luton converted to Curtin, but only one side, so you've got the best of both worlds. This is true. I wish I'd done this with mine. I was driving a Luton for about 12, 18 months, possibly longer. And I think if I'd have converted one side to a Curtin, it would have cost me about, that's about 1,400 quid to get it converted. But I reckon I would have got that money back in three months on jobs that I missed out on because they were Curtin side. I just, there was two reasons. Firstly, I don't, I didn't trust Curtins. I thought, well, things could fall out or fall aside. Now I drive a curtain side all the time, so I know that doesn't happen. And secondly, if you only get one side converted, it always looks a bit ugly to me. Oh, you've, it looks uneven, lopsided. One side is blue and the other side is white. I suppose you could get a white curtain on it. But really, um, the aesthetics don't matter because at the end of the day, it's all about the cheddar cheese. It's not about the aesthetics. Um, Sean Morris says... Oh, hang on a second, we come back to that one. Um, we are on it. It says, adding, adding a tail lift weighs at least 120 kilos, which will recruit, decrease your payload. It will also need inspecting every six months. It's a good point. You've got the lawyer on that. But in fairness, a lawyer test is 60 quid. And as the guy, as my engineer said, he said, I wish I could get my, service, my car service uh, for 60 quid. It's not dear, and they do grease the bits up and check your pipes and all that kind of stuff. How necessary it is, I don't know. It says, because you need um, a lot of by a competent engineer, a certified h &S, uh, basically, because otherwise, if your, if your tail lift hits somebody or just something falls off and it breaks, um, that could be on you. So that's worth bearing in mind. And Sean Morris says on uh, Luton with a tail lift, he said, a Luton with a good football team is more important. And we're getting one now. And we're getting a stadium. I mean, you've got to bear in mind, I am from Luton. I don't I don't follow any sport. My wife says it's the best thing about me. But I am kind of, I mean, I have been to Kenilworth Road, admittedly, to watch Dan Marino in the Miami Dolphins. I don't know why. Um, I've never, I've, I think the only football game I've ever been to is England schoolboys at Wembley, and I got bored halfway through and walked around the stadium. I'm like, just not for me, lads, you know? Um, but... When we do get the new stadium, you notice it's we. When we win, it's we. When we lose, it's they. Uh, when we do get the new stadium, I would like to go and have a look. Maybe, maybe it'll go my first game. Come in, my mate, Nigel. Uh, miscellaneous. Digging history from Ashman says, loving the wooden beams. Thank you, my friend. That's when I do, I've done a few videos from the house. Uh, they are 400 years old. The house itself is 200 years old, but the beams in the house are from reclaimed ships. They're 400 years old. There is a video. Um, how do I do this? It comes up that side. I think there is a video on the house um have a look uh we are on it again he says um me being the godfather of cx don't know about that he says um what would be a fair price per mile loot and curtain side from ipswich to aberdeen uh then because you know anything north of, of edinburgh glasgow is difficult to get out of and more like to have to get back to the midlands before you pick up a job i've asked to do this run on more than one occasion and don't want to be too cheap right how i would price that um i would imagine ipswich to aberdeen now you're not a driver's house so theoretically i mean i couldn't do it but theoretically you could drive to aberdeen Drop it off, and then you could drop down to say either to Newcastle, or you could come round and drop down to sort of Preston Blackpool, ready for the morning. So what you could do, alternatively, you could drive to Aberdeen, go some of the way, Kip, or um, even Kip in Aberdeen, and then get up early and be there for the morning. So what I would plan on that one is I would probably quote them. Um, Good loot and money. So normally on a loot and van, you might be looking a pound to one twenty. I would be looking to put them one fifty to one eighty a mile, um, and then maybe or one fifty a mile, but forty quid for the uh, for the travel lodge for the night. Stick forty pound on top, and then on my way up to Aberdeen, I would put in a search radius of a hundred, even two hundred miles to, for any van under a loot and to see what's coming back and see if I can get myself a job, but for the morning taking me back down south. That, that's what I would do in that situation. Whether that's right or not, I don't know. Probably people screaming at the TV going, "You nonsense! What are you talking about?" But that's what I would do. I mean, you've got to bear in mind in a lorry. I mean, I've done Aberdeen. I've got a grand. And then I'd trade the travel lodge for 40 quid, and then I had a job booked the next day, and that was, it was only a loot and job, but it was three pallets, and it took me down to Grantham. The whole trip took about three days, and I ended up, I ended up on good money, but sometimes when you drill into it, the money you make is not that much more than you'd make on three general days, running around, job, 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 home, sleep in your own bed. So, I'd certainly try it once. If you're saying you're asked to do it once, try it once. 
if it works out, brilliant. If it doesn't work out, get back to them and say, look, I'll do it, but I ain't doing it for that kind of money. It's a way to get involved. You know, life is a great teacher, but the school fees are high. Uh, Bez Station says, insurance. He's got a recommendation here, guys. Go with ISIS, ISIS. Um, they are by far the best. I got a quote for a new startup with no claims bonus on a 44 ton Arctic, £3,800. So there you go. I recommend Business Choice Direct because they're who I use. And if you do go with Business Choice Direct, there is a link. Um, mention my name because they give me 50 quid, being totally transparent. But also, ring two or three, you've got to go with the one that's best for you. At the end of the day, money's money. Um, Alan Farr, he says, um, I'm considering starting a self-employed career in Ireland, but struggling to get any help and reward from insurance companies. John may have some contacts in Ireland. Any help will be appreciated. Alan, what you are going to struggle on the CX in Ireland. John has said that. He said, you don't get me. You get very, very, very few jobs in the CX in Ireland. He's got the odd one where he's come over and then... Sometimes there's been jobs coming back. I am quite happy if, if if John wants to give me a ring, if I remember, I'll give John a ring and I'll try and pass the number on to you. Um, if you want, alternatively, if you want to give me your number in the comments and I'll pass it on to John and you two can have a chat. I, I mean, I did say to him, this could go, I mean, he's my man in Ireland, this could go somewhere. But he said, I'm getting a bit older now, Peter, and I don't really want to start building an empire at my age. I'm happy just doing the thing for a little bit longer. But I gladly will try and get you, got you guys in contact. John, if you're... Um, if you're um, listening, give me a bell. Uh, Godzilla's. Um, oh, because we said about the CPC. The fella, it's a, CPC. Now this is just this. Is, I'm just reading this, but this is transparent, and he is right. Uh, CPC is booked on hours alone. You need seven hours to complete a day, one day a year on your CPC. Last five years, basically, you have to do 35 hours within five years. So if you do one a year for five years, that's your CPC done by the time it comes round. Or you can do nothing for five for four and a half years, or four and three quarter years, and in the final quarter of the year, have a week off and do five P, five CPCs, and it's through. As long as you complete it within the five CPC uh, the period, it's done. He says uh, you can do it any time. He says sleeping happens in warm classrooms and topics can bore you. Uh, like how to pick up a box without messing your back up for seven hours straight is numbing. It's true. There are two CPC courses which are very, very useful. One is on driving hours, which still, you know, I still don't know all of it, right? Um, things like, well, what if I'm on a ferry? Well, what if I'm dual driving? I never do these things, so I just don't, don't, don't concern myself with it. Um, like I say, I do the Janet and John version. Um, but... Oh, the other one is securing a load. Strapping down a load and securing a load is quite useful. The rest of it, really? That's just my opinion. And they, they come out new ones all the time. What's the recent one? How to, use, how to stop people using a truck as a weapon. Lock it. Doesn't take seven hours, does it? Um, but he, says, he goes on to say, he, he says... Um, he said, charge the video so you can look at funny videos. While the, he said, well, the online courses, he said, mine's in October. He said, I've got two screens open at the same time. One to do me CPC and the other one to do um, edit pictures because no one really takes a blind bit of notice. It really is a little bit. I don't know if it's a classroom, it might be different, but it really is a bit like they just make sure, they get paid to make sure that you turn up. If you turn up and they, as long as they can prove that you were there and you were attentive when they ask you questions and you didn't get drunk at the end of the seven hours, they go, that's it, and you get the tick. It is what it is. Um, and like I say, some of it is useful. I tell you, I actually done it. I just sat there, I listened to it, I participated. It's an hour out, it's, it's a week out of my life in five years and it allows me to drive a lorry, so not the end of the world. Someone come down drive one. Of course, come yeah. Uh, Tibio so Cornwall. Uh, hi, Pete. Great video again. Thank you very much. If you would spend forty pound a night on hotels, tramping four nights a week, do you think we would still do well with profits and survive with a long wheel base van? Um, in vans, it carves into it. In vans in a long wheel base, you're going to be looking to hopefully get two hundred pound a day. Um, take forty quid out, of, out on hotels. It hurts, but I know you're in Cornwall. What I would be in, inclined to do, if it was just me on my own, I would do hotel every other day. So day one, try and get a lateish finish and earlyish start, and uh, you know get yourself one of their makeshift beds where you can sleep in the back of the van. Um, 
or in the front of the van you can get ones that you can make up like a little board and you put it down you can sleep in there day two proper night sleep uh hotel get a wash and all that kind of stuff then it's only 20 pound a night but it does i mean for me it's different like i say because i'm in the truck i have got a heated truck with a bed that folds down so i've got a nice bed to sleep in and a lorry failing that the money i get in jobs i can afford to buy a hotel but in vans it does carve into it also but they haven't said that if you're going to go distance cornwall or manchester or something like that if you get the money on the job it could work give it a try so there you go um steve athers done a few comments steve nice to see you ping up mate um uh, da, 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 da. thanks a lot for the videos it's always interesting to find out what's happening in the courier world um I've said before, I'm not in the market as uh, being a class one driver for a medical company. I'm very happy. But you never say never. I did, um, my ears did pick up when he see because he did uh, Livingstone Deer Park as he was there on Tuesday. There's a, uh, this week at the veterinary hospital, obviously, the Premier Inn. Um, loves the BP and M&S shop. Nice because, yeah, I, I love, yeah, they're great. M&S is great for food. Um, as is my choice. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Oh, it's lovely. Uh, but, um, yeah, I never made it to Livingstone in the end because I waited to pick my job up and it got cancelled. So I spent the whole weekend thinking, I'm going to Livingstone. At the moment, I spent the whole weekend concerned about Alice because she's drinking a lot of oil at the moment. It was very, very dry on Monday. And I just went up there and checked all the oil and water on all the lorries. And I had to put about five litres in her. That's a lot. So something's not right there. I'm hoping it's a pipe, not an engine or a seal or something like that. Otherwise... <laughs> It's going to be dear. We'll have to watch your space. I'll keep you informed. Record. Uh, could someone please give me an update on the current price per mile that goes for a short wheelbase or a long wheelbase vans? I've been driving a few direct jobs for the last few months, um, going back to CX and wondering, did the whole easing of restrictions make an impact on prices? I would say it's getting a little bit dearer. I was speaking to my, I was speaking to my mate Ian during the week, and he's like a very competent shipper, and he understands the game far better than me being in it a lot longer. And he says, I'm getting silly prices in. Small vans are coming in. He says, like one pound, one pound twenty. Um, he said, the problem I'm getting is I put a job out, and the long wheel bases aren't quoting because they're thinking, well, I'm not going to quote on a small van job because they're going to want it for 40 quid. And instead, I'm getting um, small vans quoting me 100 to 120 pounds. So he said, now what I do is I put a price on the job, pays 85 quid. Because that way, if you're in a long wheelbase, you go, 85 quid for like um, 100 miles, 110 miles. I'll do that. Even, even, though, even though it's a small van, I'll do that. Uh, but it does seem to be getting dearer. I've started to clock my prices up a little bit. Whereas I was 250, I'm now three. I mean, I did a job the other day, 60 odd miles, and charged me 250 quid, and it came through straight away. So there is a shortage. We did work all the way through the lockdown, or I did, doing Argos, £180 in a Luton, five in the morning till two in the afternoon, you know, drops all over the shop. Um, I'd like to try and get a bit back now if I can, particularly if I've got to buy a new engine. Um, right, Steve C. Uh, just started on CX last week. It's a bit confusing at first. He said, I'm heading to Carlisle tomorrow, having having the free rate to do so. He said, he meant, he said I meant to wait, I'm in Glasgow. Plenty leaving here, hard finding stuff coming back. I'm surprised about that. I don't know how far you're going, but I would have thought, I always I can get jobs up to Scotland easy enough. I struggle to get back out again. If you're getting out of Scotland, I mean, I don't know if you're looking for just jobs around or if you're actually going distance, maybe staying out and then coming back. That might be something worth doing because you normally get good rates for running back to Scotland. It's normally tough to get good rates running out. But um could be wrong, but that's the way I've always found it. Retro Gamer 71. Uh, thanks very much. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, Self-employed uh, owner driver aspiring myself. Uh, he appreciates the councils and the fellow hi highway pilots. We highway pilots? I guess we are a little bit. I do a walk around check. Uh, van on the run. He said, right, that's interesting. He said, isn't YouTube clever? He said, one of the ads before the video was for Fleet Go. Apparently their system is linked to a telematic system that uploads driver and truck data to a cloud base in real time. So you don't need to download and upload. Um, I read somewhere it's possible to do your TM qualification for about £400 using a home study pack um, and booking your own exams thinking of doing it if you can get your transport manager exam it is and it is a license to print money the problem is it is a difficult exam to pass the folder you've got to learn is that thick and we've got i mean i don't know you i've got the disadvantage that i don't actually work if you work in a depot where you're, you're watching trucks come in and out all the time or if you're a class one driver and you spend all day attaching air hoses and undoing air hoses you already know all that bit i don't know that bit 
I know the I know the drivers hours and the and the tacos and all that kind of bit and all the other bits, but there's an awful lot to it. Uh, but if you do do it and it is doable, I know the firm that put me through my CPC. There is a link to my website. If you at the end there's a screen that you can click to my website and I can't remember who they are, but they do a course which I don't think is too dear and that'll help you through it. I've thought about doing it. One of us, me, Al or Gemma, because when we get up to like um, six trucks, it's going to get quite dear to pay for a transport manager. I know Daniel is lovely, and I know Daniel wouldn't mind because Daniel's happy expanding his own business. But um, maybe one day I might do it myself. In that case, I'll let you know how it is. But yeah, it's worth doing, I think. But it's not easy. As that's that's just my understanding anyway. Uh, David Parks and Van on the Run have asked me what is the best truck on the CX. Guys, I'm going to do you a video this week because I actually think that's quite important. As long thinking my mate says, Lutons have gone up in price. They said, they said I've doubled. Loads of bargain seven and a half ton sales for Jeep. Because <laughs> he keeps telling me, stop telling people to buy Lutons when you drive a lorry. And he's right. And I maintain, as I had a conversation the other day with um, this week with a guy, you want to be driving 18 ton, double curtain side, tuck under tail lift. But to do it, you, driving lorries is involved. If you want the easy life, you want to drive a van, I'm going to get a loo and I'm even coming home to the idea of Uncle Albert's. It's another video coming out soon because a guy asked me recently, what do I think to the Uncle Albert principle? And I think, well, you know, it depends on you. A lot of people are going, I'm getting to that stage in my life where I just don't want to grief anymore. I just want, but you've got to keep going because when you stop, you stop. You don't want to stop. So, yeah, there's a few coming out. I'll do you guys a video. Um, Chinu Manduk says, um, how good is it to run an extra long wheelbase on the CX? Yeah, it's decent. I would always say you quite long wheelbases at 90 a pound a mile. Now I think you can even get a little bit more. You can get four long... Um, Four pallets on a long wheelbase. Yeah, it's a good van. I mean, if I wasn't, if if I had to pick a van, I wasn't. If I had to drive a van and I couldn't have my Luton curtain tail, and they said Lutons are off the board, I'd want an extra long wheelbase. That'd be my next choice because that's that's that, that you can cover extra extra long wheelbase all the way down, and they look tidy on the driveway. And if it's and they're thinner, so you can get through little spaces, get through six with six width restrictions without clunking the side of your van, as I did once. Um, Pete, don't touch me, Mew Mew. I presume that's a cat. He said, Hi, Pete. My friend had his loot and extended to five metres long, and he sometimes does 7.5 um, tonne jobs. Can you give me, please, an explanation? It's the, I, I might do you one on that one, mate. I meant to write that one down. I'll see if I can do you a video. That's involved. The problem is when you extend the bed of a loot and you make the loot and heavier. If he's got a tail lift on it, the thing can only carry realistically 850 kilos at the best of time if he's not careful he'll end up with a five metre van three and a half ton van that weighs three and a half ton and all you can actually get on it is an envelope without being overweight so that is um i'll try i'll try and give you that's the long and short of it but i'll give you i'll try and give you more detailed explanation when i get a chance but and in conclusion this week uh rick gourmet bavan mkd says nice video is your guitar playing friend a driver too now that's my friend david chris i'll do your link to his channel if you like guitars please check him out he is a lovely lovely guy although he's been very obscene on my channel this week mate it's a family show um yes he is a driver but he's a different driver to me my mate Dave is a green badge holder, which means he's passed the knowledge, which means he's done three, four years of solid studying to learn every single road and every single place that you could possibly want to go to in London. So he's a black cab driver. But yeah, do please check out his channel and his guitar skills are phenomenal. And the final word this week goes to Dave, who says, on the road, you must be brave and tireless. On the road, you can listen to the wireless. On the road, you can wear your short, short sleeves rolled. You eat chocolate when it's cold. I'm sure that's got something to do with you can eat cafe food with pride, you can throw up outside. But then, if you'd like to do a little guitar sing-along version of this free said, not the nine o'clock news, hedgehog sandwich song, I'll do a link, mate. How's that? <laughs> anyway, that's it. It's only Q&A this week. And like I say, I've got a couple coming out next week, which hopefully will be helpful. And in the meantime, take care. Take money.